I'm excited to be here. I don't know how excited you are or are not to be here listening to me, but you know, in my world, T-A-X spells F-U-N. <laughs> and so whenever I get a chance to talk tax, I, uh, you know, it is fun for me. Now, a little background, uh, Lou Weller uh, calls me up and he goes, Fred, you know, we need a luncheon speaker. And I said, well, Lou, what are the criteria? What are you looking for? Because that's a, a, an open-ended question. And Lou says, well, Fred, you know, what we're looking for is, uh, first, we need somebody local, because we really don't have much of a budget to pay anybody. And, uh, and, and second, we do need somebody available for lunch on Thursday. So you know, are you available for lunch? And then finally, we're looking for somebody who has eminent insider knowledge uh, of the latest developments in Washington, DC. And I paused and I said, well, Lou, I'm, I'm local and available. So I think we're shooting for two out of three on this one here. Um, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the talk into two parts. The first part, I want to give you a high-level overview of where we are as a country. Then the second part of the talk will be a, a little bit of a discussion about tax reform, and I'll dive into to some of the details. So let's start with where we are as a country. Now, I will give you a choice. I can either break out the 50 PowerPoint slide, very small print detail, and bore you to tears, and with the first speech that possibly the speaker could fall asleep while delivering, or I will give you a chance to have the simple version and specifically, I think I can describe where we are as a country using five numbers in five minutes. And if you give me another five minutes, I think I can solve our nation's problems. Are you interested? Okay, now these numbers are approximate, and they are as of last fall when we were having the big debate in the country about the direction of the country and the state of the country. So, Let's start out using my five numbers in five minutes. You ready? 24, 15, 78, 50, 47. 24, 15, 78, 50, 47. You ready? 24 is the percent of GDP the government is spending. 15, as of last fall, is the percent of GDP the government is collecting in tax revenue. 24 minus 15 is the deficit of about $1 trillion. So that gives you a little perspective of where we are from a budget perspective. 78. 78 is the average life expectancy of a person in the United States. When Social Security was passed in 1935, the retirement age was set at 65, and do you know what the life expectancy of a person in 1935 was? 62. Now there was a high mortality rate, so that brought the number down. But when Social Security was passed, it was passed as a true safety net to help true folks really in need. And of course in 1935, that was after the Depression, the country was in a, uh, a difficult state, and so Congress decided uh, that we should have a safety net through which people should not fall. But as a consequence, what has happened is, is that we started out in 1935 when the legislation was enacted with basic equilibrium and maybe a, a couple of years of a safety net to today, where uh, we have a full 16-year increase in the life expectancy from 62 to 78. And indeed, if you make it to 78, you're going to make it to 82 or 84, statistically. So we have all, uh, too many people using up all of that free stuff for a long, much longer period than ever was contemplated when Social Security was passed in 1935. 50. 50 is the percent of homes in the United States in which at least one person gets a check from the government. 50 is the percent of homes in the United States in which one person gets a check from the government. Now, that includes Social Security checks for which they paid. Medicare, they paid. However, it also includes 
in excess of 47 million people who were on food stamps and other types of programs intended to help uh, the poor and needy. And obviously, we just had an economic decline, so we have a lot of people uh, who are hurting. But the number 50 represents the percentage of homes in which one person gets a check. 47, 47 is the percent of homes in the United States in which there, uh, no one pays federal income tax. 47 percent, no one pays federal income tax. Now, half of the 47 do pay Social Security and Medicare. So there is five numbers in five minutes. That's where we are. Now, are you ready for the solution? Got five minutes? <laughs> All right. That's the problem. Here's the solution. The solution is I would be appointed, appointed as czar <laughs> for a day. Now, when I grew up, my name was Freddie. So I would be czar Freddie. And I don't think in my experience, and I bet in yours, any of you got beat up by Freddie on the playground when you were, when you were young. And so Freddie is friendly and pretty much harmless. So I would be appointed czar for a day, and my job would be to solve the nation's problems. So what I would do is I would call everybody's attention at noon, and I would ask everybody to, uh, to bring their attention to Czar Freddy. And I would say, folks, this is Czar Freddy. And I've been appointed to, to uh, solve the nation's problems. And I want everybody to pull out their cell phone. Because what we're going to do is we are going to have an American Idol contest. And you are going to text A, or you're going to text B. And I'm going to give you the choices. And whatever you decide, that is what Tsar Freddy is going to implement. So here is your, here the, here's the background. You ready? The background is in 2007, the size of the federal budget in the, in the dollars aggregate was about $2.7 Today, it's about 3.5 trillion. So that's about an $800 billion difference. In addition, the tax revenue right now, oddly, is collected at about $2.7 trillion. By the way, the most money in the aggregate in the history of the United States ever collected. 2.7 trillion we're on target to collect this year. So we've got a $3.5 trillion budget amount of a, of a spend. We've got tax revenue of 2.7, which leaves us with a budget deficit of 800. Now, in your family, as in mine, we can't spend more than we take in. So we have to make a decision. Which, what are we going to do? Are we going to increase uh, uh, the revenue, increase the, uh, the taxes, or are we going to decrease spending? So I'm going to give you an A or a B, and I want you to get your cell phones out, and I want you to get ready. Ready? A. You decide that you really like the spending of 2.7, and uh, that means you have to have a budget of 2.7. Now, oddly, um, in 2007, the budget amount was 2.7. So what you could do is you could just take the current budget in a non-political way and basically put it back to where it was in 2007. Whatever the allocation was, how much ever was spent on defense, whatever else you did, it would all fit back into 2007. And that would mean we would not have to raise taxes. And do you know the size of the Bush tax cuts? They're about $800 billion. So that means the Bush tax cuts, $800 billion, that would remain in effect, and we wouldn't need to raise taxes. That's A. Option B. You like $3.5 trillion of spending. You want to spend more money. You believe that that level of, uh, of, of government uh, spend should continue. And so you, you're going to vote for B. Now, if you're going to vote for B at 3.5, you have to pay for it. The Bush tax cuts, $800 billion, would be repealed for everyone. 2.7 plus $800 billion of the Bush tax cuts gets you 3.5. Now, if you repeal the Bush tax cuts, everybody's taxes will go up. Because the 47% number that I told you earlier, 
That number is largely exists because the Bush tax cuts took so many people off the tax rolls. So there are your options, folks. Option A, we stuff everything back into what we had and the tax uh, rates uh, stay the same. Or option B, we increase spending to 3.5, the current level, bring taxes up, raise taxes on everyone. There we go. Five numbers in five minutes. 24, 15, 78, 50, 47. Then my A or B, everybody texts. I don't decide, you decide, and I will implement what everybody votes for. So that's my five numbers in five minutes, and that's another five minutes to solve the nation's problem. By the way, if you gave me another two minutes, I could do tax reform. 